Welcome to the first in a series of videos this summer to help you with your chemistry. This description of the molecule versus the mole, how much does a molecule weigh versus how much does a mole of that substance weigh. And uh, let's use a familiar and simple substance, but really an amazing substance, and that's what we all know and love as water. Now, this is what's known as the Lewis structure for water. Uh, you've got an oxygen and two hydrogen in that molecule, and they are the oxygens are covalently bound to the hydrogens. These are non-bonding electrons, these little dots that you see up there, but that is a representation of one molecule of water. And we've determined that that one molecule of water weighs 18.02 atomic mass units, or AMUs. And that's for a single molecule. Now, there's a couple of things to note here, that there are, is a ratio of two hydrogens for every one oxygen. So that means that in one molecule of water, you have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. Now, if we go over here and we take a look at one mole of water, one mole of water contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. In other words, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of these guys in one mole. And when we get to that level of one mole, which is equal to this incredibly large number of molecules, the mass goes from 18.02 AMU to 18.02 grams. That's how much one mole of water weighs. Now, I thought I'd play around with a couple of things I didn't actually know, but sometimes it's it's a good idea to play around with numbers to see if you can go from something unfamiliar like Avogadro's number here, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and relate it to a value that you might be more familiar with. So I settled on the smallest number that I thought was just monumentally large that we could have some connection to is 1 trillion. And I'm, I'm writing out the numerical value of what 1 trillion is. I'm not done yet. More zeros to come. And finally, there we are. We've got a 1 followed by 12 zeros. We might write that as 1 times 10 to the 12th in scientific notation. We could also just say 10 to the 12th, which, well, that, that's not too pretty, but uh, we can, you know what I mean here. Uh, and that is equal to 1 <laughs> trillion, which is just an incredibly large number. To give you something to hang on to, uh, let's see, the only thing I equate with trillions is the national debt. And the national debt right now is somewhere in the neighborhood of 17 trillion. My gosh, that's a lot of bucks. I wish I had that many bucks. All right, so what I thought I'd do is ask a couple of questions here, now that we know what a trillion is. So let's relate this, this large number trillion, to something else that's familiar. I want to know how many seconds there are in one year. Let's start with that. So I have one year, and this is a pretty easy dimensional analysis problem. So one year here, and in every one year, three 365.25 days in every one year. The 0.25 is because every fourth year is a leap year. And then let's go ahead and let's convert days to hours. Then every one day there's 24 of the hours. Let's convert hours. Hours, not too pretty. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. And then we'll go from minutes to seconds. 60 seconds. Okay, so let's make sure the units cancel appropriately. Good dimensional analysis. Years over years. Days over days cancels. Hours over hours cancels. 
minutes over minutes canceled. So we did our dimensional analysis correctly. 3.156 times 10 to the seventh seconds in one year. So that's how many seconds there are in one year, which is uh, a lot of seconds, but nowhere near a trillion. So there's nowhere near a trillion seconds in one year. And that might be a little bit surprising. Let's go ahead and let's see how many years there are that contain one second. So this time what we're doing is we're asking how many years there are in, I'm just going to write it as 10 to the 12 seconds. That's a trillion seconds. We already know now that there are 3.156 times 10 to the seventh seconds in one year. That's going to get us there. That's all we needed to do. In scientific notation, it's 3.169 times 10 to the fourth years. Want it in a language you can understand? That's 31,690 years. One trillion seconds in 31 1,690 years. Basically, the entire history of human civilization has not had a trillion seconds elapsed. That's recorded civilizations. I'm not counting prehistory. That's an amazing value, and yet it is nowhere near, not even in the vicinity of a mole which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Here's something else I wanted to know. Why? Meh, I don't know. You know, sometimes you're sitting in a, you're sitting down on a Saturday afternoon. What else are you going to do? So how much does one drop of water weigh in grams? Okay, I had to look a couple of things up. Primarily, I had to find out what the volume of a drop of water weighs. And we're going to use something you should know something about, and that's the density of water and this is density as you should know is mass over volume so we want to know the mass in grams of one drop of water and what I discovered and I had to go to the internet for this is that one drop of water actually has a volume of 0.01437, I'd say 137, sorry, 137 cubic centimeters. I could have used milliliters, right? Let's go ahead and convert it to milliliters, which uh, you might be a little bit more comfortable with. And that's easy because one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter, certainly something you should be aware of. Now, this is a volume. What we want to do is we want to now multiply the volume in milliliters. If I want mass, then mass is equal to the volume times the density, just rearranging this equation. So the density of water, and I'm going to take a cheap shot. The fact of the matter is, that the density of water will vary with the temperature. If the temperature is a little bit warmer, the water will be less dense. If it is a little colder, then the water will be more dense. Uh, volumes tend to expand when they're heated up. And so I'm just going to use the average that we use quite a bit of one gram per milliliter for our density of water. And that's going to give us, since this is the only value that isn't 1 in our calculation, that's going to give us 0 0.014137 grams per one drop of water. Now, there's a whole lot of issues. That's a rough average, but it's not going to be too far off. Volumes of water might vary a little bit. The density of water might vary with, will vary with the temperature. So it's a rough estimate, but it's still gives you a pretty good range. Now, here's what I want to know. How many molecules of water there are in one drop of water? So here we go. This is where we get to use Avogadro's number. So we want to know how many molecules of H2O, amazing stuff, H2O. Once you learn all of its properties, you'll never be the same. I promise you. It's a life-changing experience. So what do we got? Well, we've got one drop of water, which we now know weighs 0 0.014137 grams in one drop of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert grams 
grams to moles. Now this is the first time you've done this and here's how you convert grams to mole. You divide by the molar mass of the whatever the substance is and the molar mass the mass of one mole of water you know is 18.02 grams so this is one mole of water it weighs 18.02 grams if you remember when you're doing dimensional analysis this is over one implied we don't necessarily have to do that with our dimensional analysis this is in the numerator so that the grams cancel we now have one mole we're going from this is this is grams this is the macro world moles is also the macro world but we're going to the micro world of molecules and when you go from macro to micro you always wind up multiplying by Avogadro's number macro to micro multiply by Avogadro's number so here we go every one mole of water of H2O contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Okay, so let's put it in the calculator. Let's see what we come out with. So I've got 0 0.014137 divided by 18.02 times 6.022 second e to the 23rd and that gives me 4.7244 times 10 to the 20 molecules. Now compare that to how many seconds there are in a year. It, just to get some perspective, how many seconds were there in a year? In one year, there were 3.156 times 10 to the seventh seconds in one year. That's a whole year, folks. And yet, there are 4.7244 times 10 to the 20 molecules in one drop of water. It's a pretty astounding thing to realize. Now, one last question. How many hydrogen atoms are contained in one drop of water? Well, that's an easy one from here. All you have to realize is that this is molecules of H2O. And in every one molecule of H2O, there are two hydrogen atoms. So really, X atoms of hydrogen would, uh, in one drop of water, would just be 4 point, uh, sorry, 4.7244 times 10 to the 20 molecules of water, uh, that's molecules, take my word for it, of water. And in every one molecule of water, there's two hydrogen atoms. And so all you really have to do is just multiply by two and you get the number of hydrogen atoms, which winds up being uh, 9.448 times 10 to the 20, roughly, atoms of hydrogen. All right, so if you're gonna go from macro to micro, you multiply by Avogadro's number 